for barging in, but did you see this? No, I can guess what's oh. probably in it. Look at the headlines. Warrants issued against oil swind... Oh, subtle. They use that kind of print with the war. I just can't even believe it. This is a war. Yes, with Luke and Robert outflanked on every side. Well, I got my information first person. The assistant DA came by to make sure that I knew that they were out for blood. Yeah, I, I could expect it from a cop, not an editor. I mean, look at this. Spencer Scorpio, Durbin's... I mean, that's block face type. Yeah, I'll put together neatly, grouped together in a declarative sentence. It makes Luke and Robert sound guilty as hell. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what they say about the media. Not the one I signed for. I mean, this is way out of line. Ian already, he has him convicted here. He is out for Luke's scalp. Well, it's going to be without me because I'm going to quit. That's oh, it. Oh, don't go doing anything drastic. No, I mean it, Joe. This is yellow journalism, cheap sensationalism, and I really don't want any part of it. Well, don't do anything hasty, all right? <laughs> I'm going to quit. That's it. <laughs> Can I help you with that? I don't need your help. You'd make a wonderful nurse. How's your father? As if you cared. Your petulance is unbecoming, Holly. So is your faked concern. I'm deeply concerned about your father. Then take him to a doctor. He has his medication. That's all that's necessary. But it's not sufficient. This last attack of his was far worse than any others. Only because you witnessed it. I've seen many of his attacks. We should take him to a hospital. You'd use any excuse to get out of here, wouldn't you? Okay. Now, if this estate is so well guarded, how do you propose to get Holly and her father out of here? I'll find a way. Will you stop playing with your food and eat it? This is delicious steak and kidney pie. Robert, I hate innards. Once we have Holly and her father, then we'll concentrate on getting the money. Luke, are you absolutely sure that Holly wants to go with you? I'm sure. I had her in my arms. Basil's woman. Follow her. Check, sir. Sir, your hat. Quitting your job might make you feel better. You bet it will. I just wish I never have even gone to work for that man. Still, you're in a very powerful position. You've got to realize. I am ashamed to see what Ian has done with his power. Okay, he's got an axe to grind. Fine. That's still no reason for you to give up your press card. Well, Joe, it's just that I was mad. I, I wasn't thinking straight. It, oh, you know what I mean. Do you mean you're going to keep your job? Yes, I'm going to keep my job, but I'm still mad. 
I can tell you, it's not just at Ian. Robert. How can you miss someone so much and be so mad at them that you could kill them? Well, nobody said that love was all supposed to be fun. But Joe, why don't they just call? You know, let's all let us know what they're doing, how, what, what's going on. They will when they get the chance. They will. You know, everything they have here is all circumstantial. I just wish we could come up with some more evidence. We can. Oh, and how do we start doing that? How about retracing our steps? Okay. How about retracing their steps? Where do we start? Okay, how about the uh, geological survey that they did with, uh, what, that? Van Gelder? Van Gelder's dead. Right. And so was Al Barker from the hospital. Yeah, and it gets even worse than that because Dan Rooney tried to warn him about something and he ended up getting stabbed. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go back. Um, there were two geologists. Remember, Luke wanted to be doubly sure. Yeah, the, uh, oh, well, I think, uh, Harper. That was his, uh, Harper, I don't know uh, what his first name was. Harper, that's right, because Harper went down there with, and he gave Luke an evaluation that said it was definitely okay to start drilling on the site, didn't he? That's right. If we could find Harper, he could answer a few questions, I'll bet you, Nickel. I know I must have his number. I always write down pertinent information when I'm doing a story. Well, and I do that oil story. You have number. We're in a big bunch of luck all of a sudden. All right, here we go. <laughs> well, let's call Mr. Harper. Why don't we go over to Mr. Harper's house and see how well he talks person to person? Gotcha. Would you like me to help you with that? I don't want anything from you, Basil. That's what I've always admired about you, Holly. Your independence. Thank you, Basil. No, seriously. You're a very capable woman, and we work well together. If you could just put aside your latent honesty, we could make a fortune. Not interested. I could give you further inducements. I can imagine what that means. Oh, there's no need to stretch your imagination. I'll spell it out for you. Basil, you amaze me. You know I don't even like you. That's true. You never did. Not ever since we were children. You're marvelously consistent. I admire that, too. All of a sudden, I'm... Spouting with virtues. Oh, you've always had the virtues, Holly, and I've always admired them. The only thing that stood between you and I being very good friends is the fact that you don't like me. I'm also marvelously consistent in that too, Basil. I still don't like you. In fact, I think I like you even less than I did when we were children, if that's possible. Now, would you please let me pass? Holly, how would you like to be rich? Basil, how would you like this tray wrapped around your neck? Don't worry, miss. I'll take care of that. I'm so sorry, Willie. Not to worry, miss. What happened here? I had an accident. Well, are you all right? Yes, yes. I dropped Father's tray. I'm sorry. I was just clumsy of me. Holly's a little unnerved. So I see. Particularly on edge today. Could it be that you're hiding something from us? No, don't be ridiculous, Basil. I'm worried about my father. I would have thought Luke Spencer. My father is ill upstairs, and you're talking nonsense. Is it nonsense, Holly? If I'm unnerved, it's because of him. Then you haven't heard from Spencer. Do I have to listen to this? Basil, if he's as smitten with you as I suspect, I'm surprised he's not pounding on the doors and climbing up our walls. I believe that will be enough. Then you've had no contact with him? How could I? You keep me a prisoner in here. Yeah, but your Luke is very clever. Basil, you know as well as anybody, you haven't left me out of my sight since we got here. I believe Basil means no offense to you, my dear. Why do you always stand up for him, Percy? Why can't somebody see him for what he really is? Well, 
Well, you have a knack for saying the right thing at the right time, don't you? Oh, come on, Father. You're not going to be drawn in by that wide-eyed, innocent routine, are you? I will not accept your bullying tactics, either. I wish I could wring the truth out of her. You sound like a common hoodlum. Now, you will treat that with civility, Basil. What do you expect me to do? Coddle her? I expect you to behave decently in my home. You've never been able to see any fault with her, have you? There was a time when you couldn't either. I had hoped that you two would build a future together. But you have a genius for destroying hope. This time, you've damaged yourself as well. My personal life is none of your business. Everything you do is you my business. You have no right to I have be... every right. We have become vulnerable because of your bungling, Basil. And you are accountable for it. No, call it bungling if you will. Without me, we wouldn't have the two million dollars. Well, don't count your chickens yet. We're not through. There's still a little matter of laundering the money. Yeah. Basil. Two o'clock. We are leaving for a horse farm. Why? Because I have to look at the accounts. I have not been to the farm for some time. Or does it have to be two o'clock? I have an appointment. Break it. I want you with me. Yes, what is it, Nanny? Oh, I was wondering if there was something doing, Master Percy. Uh, a little mending. Perhaps I could make some of those little trifles for you that you like so much. That would be very nice. Thank you very much. Mm. Oh, it's that grand, isn't it? <laughs> Having the family under this roof. Mm. Oh, brings back memories. <laughs> Master Basil and Miss Holly playing croquet on the lawn and... Oh, you teaching Master Basil to fish off of the sea rocks. Oh, and the tea down by the side pool. Wonderful, wonderful days. Oh, I wonder if you'd like some of those little pastries that Master Basil used to be so fond of. Mm, what was that, Penny? I could run down to the village and get some of those little pastries for tea. No, not tea. Oh, but they'd be very nice with tea, sir. Uh, we will not be in for tea, Penny. Oh, don't tell me that everybody's going to be going N again. Not everybody. Basil and I need to go to the horse farm to look at the accounts. Oh, but well then you'll be going by boat. Oh, that is a tiring trip. Yes, boring, but oh. it's necessary, I'm afraid. Well, perhaps I could pack you some refreshments, maybe some ham and cucumber sandwiches. We will only be gone for four hours. Oh, but the sea air can make you awfully hungry. Uh, perhaps excuse I should me. fix excuse you excuse something. Never going to see her again. The money, and we're going to both finish up as dog. I know, I know. Let's get back to the hotel and see if the nanny's called. Angry or nervous? 
waiter. I said I'm trying to figure out what kind of a mood you're in. Yes, Mr. Durbin. Same again, please. Yes, sir. Now, you tell me what's happened. You're trembling. I'm furious. Not another row with your father. Oh, the man's an artifact. The entire Durban Empire is about to collapse as a result of his stupid decisions. <sighs> well, I've never seen you in such a state. You'd best get a hold of yourself. Oh, please, don't you start on me, too. Well, obviously, your father's done a good enough job of that. Which is no surprise to me, Basil. You and he haven't seen eye to eye in a damn thing in years. Yeah, well, this time he's gone too far, blaming me for his own stagnation. Oh, we are angry, aren't we? I'm sick to death of being ordered about like a child. I have had it. From now on, I'm going to do things my way. Oh, strike out on your own? I should have done it long ago. I've heard that on numerous occasions. Well, you won't hear it again. This time, I'll do it. You really mean it? I've never been more serious in all my life. Well, then you must have something on your mind. I keep thinking about that two million dollars. I can hardly think of anything else. We're two of a kind, aren't we? I've been telling you that for months. I think I have a way that we can get that money and be gone without anybody else even knowing that it's... that we've taken it. But I'll need your help. And if we pull it off, you'll have two million dollars. You're absolutely right. And what will I have, Basil? I don't understand. You will have two million dollars. But what will I have? Just what you've always had. Me. Wrong. I've never really had you, Basil. Oh, you do drop by on occasion when the mood strikes you, or you need me to do something for you. All right. Tell me exactly what you want. Just you. But, uh, in a more formal arrangement. Something a little more binding. You mean a wedding ring? Oh, well, yes. And the ceremony to go along with it. Oh, of course. I, I should have thought of it. I'd, I've just had so many things to do lately. I haven't... Oh, yes, I do understand, Basil. Oh, with work and what have you, why the pressure. It just probably made it slip your mind entirely. You put it very well. And look, there are things that we have to talk about. And there are things that you must do. Basil's doing with that chick. I don't think he has much imagination. I wonder why Mrs. McTavish hasn't called. Spencer? Very good. When did she call, please? I see. Thank you. Well, it's done. I'm going to see Holly. Where? Well, Mrs. McTavish left a message that uh, my friend would be here at 3 o'clock. Hot dog. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait. That's... Cool our jets a little bit, hey? Uh, Robert, I gotta get cleaned up, all right? Uh, listen, let's not get carried away and um, forget why we came here. Look, man, I already told you, she doesn't know where the money is. How could anybody live in that house and not know where the money is? I talked to her, you didn't. She's telling the truth. Maybe. She knows something she doesn't know she knows. Yeah, okay, well, maybe she does. Now I have to get cleaned up to see my lady. Enjoy, but remember, the cash comes first, otherwise we are going to the D.I.M. That's right. Oh, hi, I'm Joe Kelly. Oh, well, this is, I'm, I'm really very hi, busy. I'm Jackie Thompson. We've hey, we see here. What's... Well, we just want a couple minutes of your time, if we can, please. Well, who are you? I'm an attorney, and uh, Miss Templeton's a reporter. Well, I'm... I have nothing to say to either of you. Will you please go? Uh, were you planning on going somewhere? I beg your pardon? In the suitcase. 
Oh, yes. Uh, I was uh, getting ready to make a business trip. Well, then it's a good thing we got here when we did. We might have missed you. Now, now look, Mr. Uh... Kelly, yeah, Joe Kelly. Is, uh, I just want you to take a look at something for us, if you wouldn't mind. Just a quick glance. You can see for yourself, a good old oil swindle made the front page of the paper yet again. Swindle? It... What's this got to do with me? Oh, I believe that you're the gentleman that made the evaluation that said there was definitely oil on the drilling site. I'm not going to stand here and waste my time. You must have some comment for the press, Mr. Harper. Especially since it was your evaluation that uh, allowed the swindlers to set the scam into operation. <laughs> Make yourself beautiful, Puppet. You're going to see Luke. How did you arrange it? <laughs> well, <laughs> Oh, uh, I love flowers. You know, I was thinking one day of maybe taking a course in uh, Japanese flower arrangement. Oh. Have I ever seen Basil? Oh, not since he was with you, sir. No. no, I haven't seen him. In fact, I wouldn't mind if I never did again. Oh, Holly. Basil often says things he doesn't mean. Is there something wrong, Mr. Percy? No, no, everything's fine. I have to go down to the boathouse and check out the boat for the trip. So if you see Basil, tell him where I am, all right? Yes, I'll give him your message. Good. And Holly, someday we will all go for a nice family outing together, all right? I can't wait. <laughs> when? When? Three o'clock. It's almost that now. It, it, it's too good to be true. Are you sure I'm going to see him? Well, with a bit of faith and luck, you will be in his arms. When, when you spoke to him, did he sound excited? Oh, that's too mild a world. Oh, by the way, it's the talk of the town. It was that funny. <laughs> yes, it was. What's so amusing? Oh, just a bit of town gossip. You probably wouldn't find it funny. Whatever it is, it certainly cheered you up, Holly. Oh, but it is that funny when Evans took the twins down for the christening. Town gossip a... never interested me. Have you seen my father? Yes, he was just here asking for you, and he said to tell you that he's down there inspecting the boat. It's a lovely day for a boat trip, Basil. I do hope you enjoy yourself. I was going to prepare something for you to take on your journey. You seem awfully pleased to see us go. <laughs> Any time you leave, Basil, it makes my day. I'm sure. So you two can start plotting. Well, don't try anything foolish. Well, there isn't a foolish bone in my body. I hope not. Because if anything happens to Holly, you will be held responsible. I love Holly like my own daughter. And if anyone tried to harm her, they would have to climb over my dead body. No one is to leave this house until my father and I return. No one. Is that understood? General Hospital will continue in a moment.